Hey, what's up, all of you beautiful subscribers? Welcome back to the Jack Chapel Show. So we got two main stories today, along with some other minor ones. The two main ones are, one is, what is the one stock I would buy today? I normally don't talk about this. I'll explain more later in the video, but if you're interested in that, just hang on. And the other big story I want to talk about today is actually Bitcoin. Or is the is Bitcoin in a bubble? And normally, you know, all this bubble talk, you know, I, I usually ignore a lot of it. But there was this interesting article that came out today. So we're going to talk about Bitcoin first. And so there's this article that came out. I was like, ah, this seems, you know, kind of interesting. Maybe I'll click on it. So a kind of a clickbaity title here. If this chart overlay has it right, it's about to get really ugly for Bitcoin investors. I was like, OK, uh, you know, I'm interested. Let's see what this chart's about because Bitcoin's a very volatile thing. And so the red line here indicates what a typical bubble looks like. And the black line indicates what has happened with Bitcoin recently. And so Bitcoin price versus what typically happens in a bubble and in, in the stock market or investing in general. And so I was like, OK, well, you know, if this chart is true, then it looks like Bitcoin is somewhat following a bubble a little bit here. OK, because just looking at the price here, you know, it kind of follows it. It's a little bit delayed, but it follows it here. So I was like, OK, well, does that happen in a normal bubble? D does this happen here where you see a a slow rise and then you see a very sharp rise over the course of a year or so or six months and then a decline and then a return to normal and then a massive massive decline so i was thinking about this is this true and so i the big thing i wanted to look at was actually the tech bubble because i think that that would be the biggest comparison here and well uh this technology spider etf tracker here goes back to 1998 right when the tech bubble was forming and so what you saw here was, you know, up until 99, up until late 1999, it was a gradual gain in the tech sector, gradual increase in the tech sector. And then we saw this giant spike here from September 24th to uh, 1999 to March 24th of 2000, a giant spike 55% in, in over the course of six months, similar to something that we've seen recently. OK, I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, and so then what did we see? We saw a giant drop off of, you know, I guess that would be about 25%. And then uh, it returned to normal. It returned to normal in by September 1st of 2000. Then what did we see? A giant drop off here. So this is a very similar pattern to what this chart showed here. I was like, okay, that's one really good example. Let's go to another one. Let's go to this REIT index here. So this is a real estate investment trust index fund. And we know what happened in the 2008 you know, stock market crash, right? And so it was largely because of real estate. So what did we see here? We saw a gradual increase from, you know, 2000 all the way up to even, you know, 2004, 2005. Then we saw, you know, kind of a, a relatively massive gain here, especially from 2006 all the way up to 2007. You know, this this index for real estate was went dramatically up. And then what did we see here? Well, over the course of the next year, roughly the next year, kind of returned to normal. It had its ups and downs, so it doesn't match the bubble description exactly here. But it re fully returned to normal by roughly April of 2008. And then what happened? Well, by August, I guess August or September of 2008, we all know what happened here. Uh, the real estate, this real estate ETF that covered a that was just a giant real estate fund dropped off 65% over the course of six months. And so that was really interesting. Then I just looked at the S&P 500 as a whole here. I mean, it follows a similar trend, I guess. I mean, especially in the, in the 2007, 2008 one, it was just the bubble built up over the course of a year or two. And then it kind of dropped down over the course of one year, but kind of returned to normal. And then over the course of one month, it fell off a cliff of about 40%. And so that's, I, I wasn't really, I just, I feel like it was, it's an obligation for me to talk about that because I don't know if Bitcoin is in a bubble, but this, it was interesting because we saw what happened. Bitcoin hit a price of roughly, I think it was 3,200 American dollars for one Bitcoin. And then it dropped down to, I think it was to about 2,000. And now right now it's returned to the normal level, about 2,500 here. And so this, it, it could be signs of a bubble. I think it's really important to talk about this. I don't know. This is why I don't invest in stuff like this because I don't know what's going to happen. It's too risky for me. I don't really know. And so that's the question I want to ask you guys is, do you think that Bitcoin is in a bubble based on just some of these charts here? And what really scares me why I think Bitcoin can be in a bubble, here's my, my reasoning behind it is that 
you know, what creates a bubble? You know, what creates a bubble? What would make a bubble burst? It's when the belief in whatever you're investing in goes to zero. And Bitcoin doesn't have a lot of applications right now. You can't go up to your local pizza shop and use Bitcoin to pay for it. You can use it in some e-commerce websites right now. I'm starting to see it in, you know, Expedia and some Amazon uh, areas, I think, and some Shopify stores. But it's still, still the price of Bitcoin is essentially just based on the belief of what the price should be. That's at the end of the day what it is still right now. So my opinion is on this is just watch out. I don't really know what's going to happen with Bitcoin. I, I don't really know. I just think it's an obligation and I should be just opening the discussion because I saw this and it just kind of opened my mind a little bit here. So, you know, in a few weeks here, if, if there anything terrible were to happen to Bitcoin, I'll say, hey, I warned you guys. <laughs> I'll say something like that. But if nothing happens, I can just say I'm wrong and just ignore this chart. So that's something to keep an eye on. Is Bitcoin in a bubble? Maybe. Because of recent weeks, maybe. That has entered my mind here, maybe. So we're gonna move on here to a stock. We're gonna talk about one stock that I would buy right now. But before I uh, before I talk about all this, I just wanna mention, I normally don't talk about stocks that I buy on this, um, on YouTube. And usually I talk about, I, I show you what I buy on my website. And so why I'm actually doing it on YouTube uh, today, and I'm not doing a deep breakdown or anything. So here's why I'm doing it on YouTube today. It's because um, uh, for, you guys know I'm building an e-commerce marketplace, right? And so today I actually thought of an additional business thing uh, cost that I'm gonna need to do and it's gonna be thousands of dollars, You probably in the next month or two, in the next couple of months. And so I'm gonna not be investing in stocks, so I would have told you what I would have bought, okay? So right now my portfolio, I'm not gonna talk about specifics, but my portfolio is roughly 80% safe stuff, 20% risky stuff, or you know, stuff that is risky, right? My version of risky is not risky to most people. And so here's, I would probably be going towards a risky stock if I were to invest in the next uh, few weeks here. Uh, by risky stock, I mean a company that is that doesn't pay a dividend. That's usually a risky stock to me. So we're gonna just take a look at what this company is, okay? So without telling you the title of this company, hopefully it doesn't show it on here, but what would you say if a company had gross profit margins of 61% consecutively, or 60% pretty much over the last five years, and net profit margins of, uh, you know, stable 20%, Plus the revenue growth is roughly at 20% still. They're also a massive company with a market cap of, you know, 600 billion. You know where this is going, right? Their market cap 600 billion roughly. And uh, so yeah, so their revenue is roughly what 100 and something billion dollars a year, 100 some I don't know what it is. I can check after in a second here. And so what would you say? Well, this is a pretty good company. It's a high growth company, and here's why I would buy this company. Google, why would I buy them today? It's because you get a five, you're getting a 5% discount today. I do realize this. So we're gonna take a little bit of a, a deeper dive here. So there's quarterly data, of, they haven't updated this. Uh, so the, the last quarter result should pop up soon. But they've been so consistent and they've been still growing as a company in massive ways here. So we're gonna take a look at Google stock and why I would buy them. It's because look at this. Oh, since their uh, earnings report came out just a couple days ago where people were disappointed that the company didn't have as much profits as it should have because they got fined a bunch, uh, they still had revenue growth and they would have had a massive increase in net income if they didn't get fined $2.7 billion. So uh, the stock's down about 3.64%. So, you know, you're kind of getting a 5% discount here. We're gonna go back one month too. I thought it was at a higher point at some point, but um, you're, you're buying them at a 4% discount right now from what their high was. Now, I do realize that we could be in a tech bubble right now. I do realize that, but here's my reasoning behind this is that when I buy a stock, I plan on buying a company 
that's going to be solid for the next 10 years. Okay. I don't care if my stocks go, as you guys have probably seen, if you've bought my, um, my course and you guys have seen my updated 10, 15, 20 videos of what I've been buying. I don't care if a stock goes up or down 5%, 10%. I've seen that with some of my stocks, if they go down dramatically, because one, they always rebound. And two is that I don't care as long as in the long run, if they go up in the long run over the course of 10 years, that's what I care about. And Google, sure, they could be overvalued right now, although their P.E. ratio is 34, which I mean, 34 is still fairly high. It's I, I like to buy, you know, companies that are below 25. But, you know, Amazon's at 190 right now for for some perspective for you guys. So Google is still a high profit company. Uh, they're priced priced at a premium right now, but I would consider looking into them at least. Um, well, I mean, look at them here. Even look at look what happened to them during the uh, stock market crash. It crashed in what uh, September two thousand eight. So they were down. Okay, they were down forty percent, but they recovered within within one year. They recovered from their peak price within one year. So they're even if something were to burst here, they could still do well. Although tech bubble, I don't really know what's going to happen. But just my opinion on Google right now is you could buy them at a decent discount today. And so I would look into buying them again. Take this all with a grain of salt. I'm not trying to price fix or anything. I can't do that. I don't have the power anyways. I wouldn't do that anyways. But um, that's what I would have bought today if I didn't have additional business e-commerce expenses. I'm going to talk about that in a separate video of what those expenses are. And... Um, yeah. So anyways, you guys, you can use that for whatever you want. I think that Google is going to be a great company going into the future over the next 10 years. And that's why I would buy them. But saying that we could be in a bubble, who the hell knows? They could go down 50% tomorrow. Um, I still think that they would recover though. So uh, the next story I wanted to talk about today is actually Boeing. Okay. So Boeing, uh, then we're going to talk about Foxconn in a second here. So Boeing, they're just a stock market winner today. They're up 9%. But why am I talking about them specifically is because yes, they're up 9%. Yes. It's because they announced good earnings and their gross profit was better. Their earnings per share. Actually, they announced that it was $2 and 55 cents per share with an estimated uh, $2 and 30 cents per share. That was what was expected. So uh, they beat Wall Street's expectations by a lot. Actually, the stock's gone up now. So it, it's closed at roughly 10% higher um, than this morning. Actually, we, are we closed yet? Uh, we should check here. This usually doesn't. Yeah, okay, we're closed. Good. Oh, yeah, it's, it's 4.15. Okay. So uh, why am I talking about this stock specifically today? Because this is a typical example of a restructuring and making the numbers look better than they actually do. And that's why I want to talk about this. It's because their revenue, so their top line, their revenue is actually down about 15%. That's what this report showed. Their revenue is down 15%. However, they cut costs by, uh, I guess, roughly what, 20, 25%. And so the revenue is, dr is down, I'd say dramatically. 15% is pretty dramatic. And they cut costs down even more than that. And so as a company, I guess that they're shrinking, but they have some sort of cash flow now. So here's my opinion on this, is that as a company, this can mean two things. Because your revenue is going down, it could mean that, um, you know, you, it might not be a good company to buy into in the long run. But what this also means here is because you're cutting costs so much is that it gives you a lifeboat. If you're cash flow positive instead of losing money, or if you're profiting a little bit more, it gives you a larger runway to be successful as a company. So my opinion on this is should the stock have shot up 10%? No, because I am not that bullish on it because revenue is down 15%. But I do like that they are restructuring the company to make it profitable, okay, to make it last longer as a company because we can take a look back here at this Boeing stock here. So they've done very, very well. Over, that's what they've been doing over the past year, by the way. But one, look at, oh, they look like they're in McDonald's territory. Look at what happened to them over the past month. I guess that's all happened today, right? And so as a company, they've been good. I mean, look at this. They got really killed during the stock market crash of 2008. It took them six years to rebound from that. And then they've kind of been static. Uh, they were static for a few years after that. But, um, wow, Jesus, look at this here. Look at this 74% gain in one year. That is very, very good. Um, so just my opinion is that this quarter here, 
they kind of inflated the numbers. Their revenue was down, but they were cutting costs so much that they made their profits profits and earnings look a lot better. So what do you guys think of Boeing? And what do you guys think of companies doing that? Just cutting costs so much. I mean, it's probably good for the company. Uh, however, they laid off thousands of workers and all that stuff. And, you know, liberal talk. Oh, this is not good. The company shouldn't focus on profits. But at the end of the day, you have to do stuff like this occasionally if you want to make the company successful. Uh, but I don't know. I'm really torn on this. I understand what they're doing, but they they inflated their numbers a lot this quarter. So we're going to move on here to the next topic here. But let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of the Boeing stock? So next, we're going to talk about uh, two more minor stories here. One is Foxconn. And so this is just something I, I needed to touch on because it is relatively big news. So Foxconn, they're a pretty big uh, display, chi a Chinese manufacturing company that ma manufactures like tv screens and panels and um computer screens you know stuff like that so they announced that they're investing 10 billion dollars in a factory in wisconsin and so trump's actually going to announce it but this is actually relatively big news i mean this is three thousand jobs that are coming to wisconsin here apparently seven states were bidding for this factory now who knows um i mean because they announced another factory a few years ago and they actually discontinued it so i don't really know but this is pretty big news i mean three thousand jobs that's a lot that can wherever they're putting this factory is going to get uh, you know immediate it's like getting a something as big as a hospital it's like getting a hospital pumped into your neighborhood. I mean, for me, actually, what's really, really interesting is that a hospital came into my parents' uh, neighborhood here in Oakville. Is that um, so? This this hospital came in, and uh, like immediately after the hospital was announced, you saw all of these other plazas popping up. Some medical plazas, you know, a kilometer away. You know, thousands of of townhouses just popped up and other houses too, like and within one kilometer or two kilometers of this. And it really pumped in, like Oakville's a really good economy, but it really, really pumped uh, some more money into the economy. So wherever this plant is going in Wisconsin, I mean, I'm really happy for you guys because that can really help out a lot. So uh, the next, I guess, but here's the other thing. I know hospital is a little bit different because hospital, you're getting people on average that work at a hospital get paid 80 grand a year, 80 to 90 grand and factory workers probably going to be about 40 to 50, but still it's really big news for wherever that plant goes. And uh, hopefully uh, wherever town it goes, it, uh, you know, it takes off and the town does well. So we're going to move on here to this other story here. I needed to talk about, I just, I, this is just a lighthearted story to kind of close it out before the stock market winners and losers. Coca-Cola axes Coke zero for Coke, Coca-Cola zero sugar. I don't know why. Um, I guess they want to brand it with some of the red and less of the black. I just don't really know why they're doing this. Maybe to get back in the news. I don't know. I drink Coke Zero. Uh, it's terrible for you, but I love the taste of it. They're still going to use aspartame. They're going to, the taste is going to be really similar. They said they just wanted to rebrand it. So for all of you that like Coke Zero out there, uh, it's, you know, this is happening. Um, I don't really know why. I couldn't really get a good answer here. They just want to. I guess blend what is we optimize the blend of flavors that we gave Coke Zero. It's real Coca-Cola taste. I don't I don't know what that means. So uh, what do you guys think of this? Do you care? I don't really. I'm using up on my Coca-Cola Zero sugar intake. Coca-Cola Zero sugar. What? You're just adding one word. Uh, I don't know why companies do this sometimes. Some genius marketing 40 year old director thought that it would be a good idea to add another word onto their brand. At the end of the day, Coke's Coke. Um, it's not going to decrease or increase sales that much. So we're going to talk about the stock market winners and losers. So Boeing, big winner, up 10%. Advanced Micro Devices, up 5%. AT&T, up 5%. EA, up 4%. Here's one I want to talk about, actually. So actually, one more stock market thing here. Uh, Amazon stock. So they have not been stock market winners at any time in the past uh, month or two. But look at this quietly they're at 1052 bucks a share and at an all-time high they've been chipping away with these one percent gains like every day one percent gain one percent gain two percent gain and they've just been chipping away at it and all of a sudden you know look at this uh look at this here from april 27th to today they're up 14 percent and they've been chipping away this stock here so I'm pretty, you know, pretty big news there. I, they're not a stock market winner, but they've just been, <laughs> they've been a, they're not a blue chip stock, but I mean, they've been actually chipping away at their gains. So uh, Amazon stock is at an all time high. So our stock market losers are actually 
Akamai Technology down 14%, Universal Health Services down 8%, and Wind Resorts down 5%. Okay, so those are the stock market winners and losers today. I think that's going to wrap it up. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. You're all very beautiful people. Make sure to check out my stock market program in the link down below if you want to learn more. And I will, uh, I will see you guys in the next video.